Hello and welcome to this Manufacturing Process Technology Part 2 Module 29. We were talking about the EDM process, electro discharge machining process and then we also wanted to find out the material removal rate and for that uh, we looked at some parametrics related to the process, one of them being the depth of melting temperature up to which theta basically is either equal or greater than the melting temp uh, temperature of the material where machining is being carried out <laughs> and we also looked at a set of equations through which we could arrive at a formulation for this theta in terms of z that is the, uh, the depth at the particular radius a and we assumed a circular heat source and a constant heat flux boundary condition. So, basically we arrived at a formulation where we could write down uh, theta melting as twice h root over alpha T d divided by pi k a square T d times of the third representation of the error function I r f c uh, of z the depth, let me write this down a little better manner z uh, divided by twice root of alpha T d minus the I e r f c root over z square plus a square divided by twice root of alpha T d and uh, I also further mentioned that the way that you represent this I e r f c of let us say some variable zeta uh, is 1 by root of pi e to the power of uh, minus square of zeta minus of zeta e r f c zeta where e r f c zeta is actually equal to 1 minus the error function of zeta and the error function of zeta is twice by root of pi integral 0 to zeta e to the power of minus x square dx. So, that is how you represent the uh, different kinds of representations associated with this numerical integral which is the error function. So, having said that the uh, you know solution is kind of clear in the sense that uh, we try to find out this temperature boundary where the theta would be equal to theta m beyond which the theta would be less than theta m. And if you look at really the crater and the way it is formulated, we are really interested in a boundary where theta equal to theta m and beyond which uh, there lies a zone or an area where theta is less than theta m because uh, that is still the solid portion whereas this cup which is formulated or the crater which is formulated has <coughs> liquid metal because temperature of this metal is either above or equal to the melting uh, temperature of the material. So, this is in fact a solution of this boundary that we are looking at corresponding to theta equal to theta m and it depends on two factors one is of course the A and another is Z. So, Z basically gives you the maximum depth up to which uh, you know the melting boundary extends and A is the uh, radius uh, which actually has been assumed at the very beginning uh, when we assumed a circular heat source and a constant uh, heat flux boundary condition. So, you basically can solve for this z value which is important for estimating for estimating the volume melted geometrically. So, the mechanics of the EDM process uh, is basically uh, about the total amount of heat that is uh, made to inflow from the circular boundary into this uh, crater shaped area where melting is taking place. Uh, obviously, minus the amount of heat that goes into state conversion from solid to liquid and uh, to take care of the latent heat of the molten material. Uh, the actual heat input rate can be found out by subtracting the heat used to melt the material from the total heat supplied by the spark. Okay. So, actually if we look at that boundary, uh, we can actually uh, apply a slight modification here where the total heat influx minus the um, latent heat of fusion times of the total mass, you know, which is pi a uh, square z 
the volume times density of the uh, melt of the metal divided by the total area which is pi s square divided by the spark discharge time. So, this is going to be the actual heat input rate per unit area. So, actual heat flux uh, per unit area at the circular boundary. So, <coughs> this can be expressed as calorie per centimeter second and H total again H the total amount of heat released in calories H m is the latent heat in gram per or calorie per gram the amount of heat needed to uh, melt or do a state conversion of 1 gram of material. Rho is basically the density of the material basically represented as gram per centimeter cube and the diameter of the crater is given by 2 A. That is how you uh, try to find out what is the actual heat flux per unit area at the circular boundary. So, having said that uh, we need to also empirically sort of estimate that how uh, we can actually relate the, uh, the diameter A to things like operating power or the discharge time. Obviously, uh, if you may all recall that if supposing the power is more or the amount of time for which the spark discharge is, occur, uh, is, is occurring is more, the A would not be fixed and will keep on expanding. So, circular region may um, you know increase because of additional heat flux which comes over and above uh, the one which uh, has been proposed. Okay. So, if supposing there is an increase in the power level of the EDM system or increase in a plus duration, any of these would uh, bring in additional heat energy and there would be an increase overall in the crater size in terms of diameter as well as the depth. So, in order to estimate maybe a numerical uh, or an empirical estimation of A may be needed with reference to both these uh, quantities. So, there is such an estimate which exists. So, 2 A can be uh, given by uh, some constant k times of w to the power of n 1 times of T d to the power of n 2. This is of course, um, sort of an empirical formulation times of times of <laughs> discharge time T d to the power of n 2, uh, where the a is expressed in centimeters. Okay. So, the units here is uh, centimeters for a and uh, this is only an empirical relationship which is obtained experimentally. So, that one must understand. So, W is the <coughs> total pulse energy in joules and uh, all the 3 n 1 and 2 and k are constants. obviously depending on both the electrodes as well as dielectric materials properties. So, the way that the power law relates also is quite variable based on uh, the the material as well as material of the electrode as well as the material of the dielectric fluid. So, the melting uh, temperature depth which we also recorded as z in the last step is uh, further related to the crater volume to the crater volume. In fact, I am going to uh, 
estimate the volume V c in terms of uh, uh, an expression H c which relates to the crater depth or the crater height whatever you may call times of 3 a square plus H c square centimeter cube. Okay. V c is the crater volume and obviously we know is the diameter 2 is the diameter of the crater centimeters obtained from this last step right here and uh, H c is sort of you know proportional to z you can call this the crater depth. Uh, it is uh, probably the maximum z you know that is what the corresponding to theta equal to theta melting crater depth um, centimeters. So, that is how we can estimate uh, what is the volume removal. I am going to come to this formulation and try to prove it from first principle how this volume can be uh, solved for. So, let us assume that let us say if we are talking about a small crater of this uh, size or total diameter uh, let us say A and the total height at C. Okay. So, let us call this point at the center A capital A this capital B and we further extend this all the way to the geometrical center uh, of the point where we call it O. Okay. So, I just want to extend this all the way to this point here geometrical center where we call it O. Let us project the radii on both sides uh, as radii R and let us assume that the crater shown in the diagram on left is a part of a sphere of radius r. Okay. So, I can simply apply let us call this point C. So, I can simply apply the, uh, the Pythagoras theorem in triangle OAC and say that uh, R minus HC which happens to be OA okay, square plus uh, square of A brings us to square of R. Okay. So, if I solve this expression here we get H c times of twice r minus H c equals a square or in other words r becomes equal to a square plus H c square by twice H c. So, if I assumed this to be equal to 0 uh, let us say 0 0 or the origin the point B would really be at you know uh, a corresponding value of radius equal to a square plus H c square by twice H c and similarly the point uh, A just as the point B has been found out from the earlier step is nothing but R minus H C. So, basically it is A square plus H C square by twice H C minus H C. In other words A square minus H C square by twice H C. So, what we are trying to do here is to sort of uh, find out you know what is going to be the crater volume based on uh, the variation of this crater from the point A all the way to the point B, where we already know that A is at least A square minus H C square by 2 H C away from the point O. Okay. So, let us write this down A square minus H C square by twice H C square H C. And we also know further that the point R, uh, you know the point B is uh, uh, at a distance A square by H c square divided by 2 H c from the point O. So, let us now uh, invert the crater and try to do the uh, elemental analysis of the crater. So, I am just going to make the crater upside down okay, just for convenience of representation and nothing else. Let me just uh, do this in a little better manner. Okay. So, here is the crater and then if we 
really projected it brings us to a overall you know spherical shape or diameter represented by a center here on the dotted line. So, this center is really the uh, O and there are two points obviously, one of them is uh, uh, the point A and the other is a point B, this is the point C and we are trying to map you know this point. So, let us assume that um, the total radius of the sphere here in this case is capital R okay. and uh, further we are assuming a certain value um, of y here in the y coordinate side. Okay. So, this is the y coordinate, this is the x coordinate where we want to estimate the size of an alveolar or a ring. Okay. So, we first of all want to draw a ring here which is just parallel to uh, this crater here. So, you have a ring here where we are trying to estimate okay, um, and this ring has a thickness d y. Okay. So, you have a thickness here d y and this ring is so small that you know you can consider it to be mostly like a um, an incremental ring you know in, in the d y is very very insignificant okay and typically although the d y is really along an angle but we can consider that the angle is not very matterable because we are having a very very thin section here so having said that now the total volume that would come of the crater uh, would really be the uh, total area of this particular ring here and uh, the area can again be obtained by looking at this radius of the annular small r let us say radius small r square obviously can be represented as the capital R square minus the uh, square of y okay, where y is the distance O A as I had earlier pointed out here along the y direction. So, r small r or the radius of this annular is root over uh, capital R square minus y square. So, in this event the total volume would be obtained by looking at the, uh, the area of this annular which uh, or the volume of this annular which actually uh, which actually can be represented as a cylinder of the radius r square minus y square. So, we have pi times of uh, square of this radius of the annular r square minus y square times of height dy where the y really varies as you know from the point uh, A to the point B and I had already expressed the point A to be having you know a distance A square minus H square by twice HC and B having a distance A square plus HC square by twice HC. So, by solving this integral by solution of this integral you could actually arrive at the total volume of this crater V c. So, that is how the volume of the crater is represented as pi by 6 h c times of 3 a square plus h c square. I am not going to do the detailed solution here because I understand that you know uh, you be able to take care of this integral. Um, you could just substitute the values of a and b in order to find out what is going to be the total volume of the crater. So, as uh, h c is uh, proportional to uh, z thus uh, the z value gives an indication of material removal by each spark uh, 
and the figure below shows the theoretical z values here for example and uh, the z value is plotted as a function of spark discharge time and you can always see that as the uh, discharge time is increased um, the total amount of melting temperature depth which is this z maximum is also higher and higher for a certain pulse energy and for a certain diameter that we are uh, trying to assume. However, it is also to be noted here that points with higher melting point uh, may have this. So, it is indicated that you know uh, the uh, all these things that z value, the discharge time as well as the melting point that they are kind of related. So, if you look at the different melting points of these three materials zinc, aluminum, copper. So, the melting temperature of copper let us say theta m copper is highest you know uh, and then uh, is for aluminum and then is for zinc and so this is the lowest melting point or melting temperature and you can see here that the extent to which for a certain amount of um, spark power and for a fixed uh, diameter in this particular case the depth of melting temperature z goes is maximum if the theta is minimum okay theta melting is minimum zinc for example melts at 419 degrees celsius vis-a-vis uh, -vis copper which is at about close to 1028 degrees celsius or aluminum which is about 619 or 600 uh, about 600 plus <coughs> let us say. So, uh, you can see that there is a parity in the way that z is uh, being estimated here with respect to the discharge time. And uh, also important is the fact that you know the discharge time uh, per se if we look at as more you know in, in case of zinc this is really the point from which uh, the z value starts falling down that means there must have been a power switch off uh, where the z value has peaked beyond which the melt pool getting formulated and the distance getting um, small uh, bigger between the electrodes would enable the, the electric field to go down uh, from the breakdown field of the medium and the spark would extinguish. Okay. So, these are really the points uh, where the spark such spark extinguishes beyond which the, the z plot goes down. Okay. And so, you can see that for zinc this uh, time duration of the spark is also uh, a little higher in comparison to aluminum or copper. So, that is about how the variation happens with different materials of different uh, melting temperatures. Uh, the actual variation uh, of the volume of the crater or the material removed with respect to the discharge time is also shown in this figure right here. And you can see that as the pulse uh, at the spark power is increased from 3 joule to 30 joule to 300 joules, the crater volume that is formulated as thousand so many thousand centimeter cubes is certainly more uh, obviously this is the switch off time beyond which there is a change in the volume or it comes down and uh, obviously the discharge time also as you can see is different so for a 10 to the power of minus 2 discharge time at a power of about 300 joules you could go and produce a crater volume which is close to 10 to the power of 3 centimeter cube Okay, or if uh, the power is changed by a factor of 100 to 3 joules and the discharge time is changed again by 2 orders to about 10 to the power of 3, uh, you could see that this removal rate can come again all the way down to about 10 centimeter cube which is about a hundredth of what happened in 300 joules. So, there is a parity with discharge time of the um, you know uh, the total volume which is removed. Uh, and also is a parity between the volume and the power. So, you have uh, estimates which relates the z or the melting temperature depth uh, as a function of the material, you have estimates which relate the volume, total volume removed or volume of the crater as a function of the power that is being used in the discharge time. So, the one important feature which becomes uh, evident from these results is that the material removal is very low for small discharge time and increases with Td. Okay. When reaching a peak value it suddenly drops to 0 that is another uh, important thing. So, it has also been established that the material removed per discharge strongly depends on the melting temperature of the material and the effects of cavitation in, in the mechanical removal process is also uh, very very important. 
Let us also look at the timing of the maximum material removal rate, cavitation obviously plays a big role uh, in material removal for all EDM processes. <coughs> if I look at uh, the MRR during a single spark plotted against time, it is reflected here. This uh, right side y axis indicates the material removal rate during a spark uh, cycle Q as a function of time and uh, the left side indicates the pressure with respect to time as the sparking happens. So, obviously, you can look at this plot and see that the maximum uh, material removal rate is sort of time shifted with respect to the maximum pressure. This is obvious because you know the pressure that is there mostly on the workpiece in EDM is because of the electron pressure and there is a certain time duration at which the electron wave which is coming to hit. Uh, the surface of the, uh, the work piece has the maximum impact or the maximum momentum transfer which could be considered to be the point of the maximum pressure. So, here the pressure is much much above the atmospheric pressure at such an instance of time and uh, it is because of this compression uh, shock wave that melting happens you know and the, the material gets completely molten up to the depth of melting temperature. However, uh, that is not really a good time for the material to get removed because the pressure is still on and then once the, um, the alternate compression which is there or the rarefaction which is there comes in and the electron has been or the electron momentum has been completely uh, sort of absorbed, uh, uh, you, you, can, you can think of it that uh, you know the medium uh, which is over and above the work piece has a uh, higher inertial component in comparison to the electron and there would be a time delay for the medium to come and fill up that zone you know which has just been uh, voided because of the sudden absorption of the electron at the anode. Anode remember is a cathode, uh, anode remember is an electron sink. So, okay, so all the electrons uh, suddenly moving out in the region close to the to the anode may create a cavitation effect where there the where maybe there is a case where the pressure even goes down below the atmospheric pressure. You can see the pressure plot here that at the time where such a thing has happened and such an event has taken place, the pressure actually goes uh, below even the atmosphere pressure. Although the whole fluid is maintained at an atmospheric pressure over the EDM is an open process open to the atmosphere, but there is always a tendency of this inertial lag between the medium and the fast moving electrons which may create a sort of a cavitation negative pressure differential with respect to the atmospheric pressure and so this is really the point where uh, the material would be the most removed because as the pressure is lower than atmospheric pressure there is a tendency of the uh, of the material to get pulled out into that pressure void or you know pressure differential. So, you can see uh, that the plot of the material removal versus uh, of the uh, spark, spark cycle happens at an instance of time or maximizes at an instance of time when such a cavitation effect is being felt. Okay, and the electron wave has completely eliminated and there is a uh, pressure less than atmospheric pressure in near the workpiece where the material needs to be um, diffused within the, uh, the liquid dielectric. So, that uh, shows that how critical you know this process is uh, process the EDM processes in terms of uh, its material removal and the, the overall pressure. Uh, that the electron would exert over the, the workpiece surface. So, material removal otherwise uh, is a very complex uh, you know uh, thing to be estimated during an EDM because of all such intricate issues, but uh, there can be always an average rate estimation uh, which may not really be a, a real time rate estimation. And uh, since the size of the crater depends on the spark energy, the, the depth and the diameter of the crater are given by again two empirical relationships here. Let us see for example, the total crater depth where the theta can reach up to theta m is given by k 1 w to the power of 1 by 3 where w is the pulse power in joules. This h c is represented in centimeters and 2 a uh, or the total diameter also there is an, um, another empirical estimate which estimates this to be k 2 w to the power of 1 by 3 centimeters. W is the spark energy in joules and k 1 and k 2 are constants. So, for copper electrodes for example, and kerosene is a dielectric medium k 1 k 2 has been estimated to be 0 0.4 and 0 0.045. And if we apply the V c formula here which says V c equal to pi by 6 h c times of 3 a square plus let us see square centimeter uh, q 
cube I can simply apply or, or substitute the values of H C and A from these two empirical empirically arrived at relationships to find an overall you know power dependence on the total volume rate of removal and this power dependence can be represented as pi by 6 times of k 1, 3 by 4 k 2 square plus k 1 square times of w centimeter cube. Okay. So, you can say that this constant right here which has been developed you know is uh, a sort of proportionality between the V c that is the material volume or the crater volume that has been uh, formulated uh, and the pulse power uh, the spark power or spark energy in joules I am sorry not power, but energy in joules which has been applied onto the, uh, the material surface. So, there are uh, some empirical estimations again where uh, you can talk about uh, what is the relationship between the uh, you know the material removal rate and the melting point of the material obviously, if uh, the melting point is higher then there is a possibility that uh, the material removal rate may be smaller. So, a rough estimate in case uh, of uh, you know MRR has also been empirically found out as q equal to 4 10 to the power of 4 theta m to the power of minus 1.23 millimeter cube per ampere minute. Ampere minute is basically units for ch uh, charge flown into the system and so you could say that if the theta m for a material is higher let us say in the copper example earlier we had taken theta m to be higher the material removal uh, rate okay, uh, obviously falls down because this theta m to the power of 1 minus 1.23 and uh, we uh, in this relation have assumed sort of average sparking condition and also uh, this is not a snapshot of really uh, uh, what happens with the onset of the spark and the dying down of the spark it is actually only an average uh, removal rate. Also if we circulate the dielectric fluid there may be a better uh, MRR because of the circulation obviously because now you are trying to uh, give very less relaxation time uh, between one spark and the next. It is very obvious uh, that if supposing there is a establishment of a spark column, uh, there is always a tendency of this column to retain itself you know and this conducting characteristics unless the, uh, the dielectric fluid comes and washes the column away. So, in this particular example or in this particular case if there is force circulation such relaxation time is uh, changed and then the spark is enabled to formulate more quickly or the spark frequency can be then taken up uh, much easily. So, I think I will sort of stop here for this particular module and in the next module we will try to work out some more factors related to uh, some circuits, some power sources which would be feeding the EDM process and uh, letting the material removal uh, to occur. So, up till then goodbye and thank you.